Hi everyone, today I'm going to do my updated no makeup makeup look and this is certainly something that I'm very much known for. I've made quite a few of no makeup makeup look tutorials over the years. I've particularly enjoyed making them because such heavy makeup has been fashionable really for, for a lot of that time and to me a genuinely no makeup makeup look is one that looks like you're not really wearing any makeup in daylight in real life but you are, it's all about enhancing the skin, enhancing your eyes, bringing out your features. Of course, there's some concealing involved, but it is really about looking naturally, you know, fresh and um, less tired. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. We're focusing really on the technique. There is nothing that you need to buy for this look. It's not something, I believe that everything that I'm gonna to use today, you will have a version of within your makeup kit or your makeup bag already. So it's not that you need a very special, specialized product for. It is just about the technique. So before you start your no makeup makeup, have a look at your skin if you can in daylight that is great and have a look what it's up to at the moment is there any more redness than usual do you have any breakouts how is your skin looking because what we're going to try and do with this no makeup look is really look at the areas of your face where things are looking good and replicate that in the other areas of your skin so if you find that, well, you need some evening out, so if you're red, or I'm not too red at the moment, but if you are red around, say, your chin and, and this area or anywhere else, then what I recommend that you do is you start with something like a tinted moisturiser. If you don't have a tinted moisturiser, most foundations can mix really well with um, your regular moisturiser. So I'm going to do that to start with. This is really about evening out, so I'm not expecting this to cover anything like a spot or something that's red like this thing on my cheek. All it will do is even out the skin around that area. So keeping it really, really light. You can use fingers if you want, because it's such a thin thing that I'm doing. And you'll probably think, well, that doesn't look any different, but I will do a before at the end and you'll notice how these little increments of makeup, these tiny little tweaks, these tiny little things really do make a difference. I'm going to go back in. I've done one layer of barely there uh, moisturiser and foundation mixed together. So any areas that are larger, I'm going to go back in and just buff over. So for me, really, it is just my... I guess my chin area where I can have a little bit more of that redness there. So that's the first stage. If you're someone that you look at your skin and you think, well, the tone is really even all over, but I've just got these four or five spots, you can skip this first stage. Just do your skincare. And I did forget to mention skincare is very important. So if you do have Obviously, if your lips are very kind of um, dry or they need a little exfoliation, likewise with your skin, if your skin looks kind of dry and um, a little bit patchy, then obviously good skincare is everything because it will really help you to get away with wearing less makeup. And that's the whole point of this look. So if you do have the even skin tone, but you've just got more of the localized areas of redness or localized spots, skip this first stage and go on to this next stage. So the next stage will be more of our intense coverage. So I've evened out all over. And for me, I want to just pinpoint onto a few of the little marks, a little bit of redness there, a spot that's healing up here. Depending on how, what your skin's up to at the moment, of course, it changes all the time. And really, you just choose your weapon for this. So it could be something like more of a hot pour type intense concealer. It might be something like a stick foundation, liquid foundation. You could use something like a regular kind of concealer. It just needs to have coverage because we want to use a tiniest amount of it. Even the professional camouflage sets are really, really good for this because that's that's the derma color. Yeah, cryolin derma color. You hardly need to use any then. So it's, you're not putting on a lot of product to try and achieve your goal you are pinpointing with a tiny brush just where you need it. I'm going to use some um, full coverage concealer. 
Well, I'm just going to start to go over and cover. You can either use your brush that you just used that still has a little bit of tint on if you've done a tint otherwise just use a clean brush. If you've watched my videos before you know that I you know all about this. This is my pinpoint concealing technique but honestly it is the best. I still do it on all my clients today and I still get compliments for you know to the point where clients ask to see a mirror because they're like my skin looks so natural can I see it cl like close up almost in a magnifying mirror because they want to see how why does the skin look completely flawless but it doesn't look like there's any makeup on there and this is the secret and you do a kind of larger area first and then if you've got a really stubborn bit in the center you go back to the center the reason I do that is because then you don't have any small areas that have solid lines around them because that's a dead giveaway it really is and it's kind of like a trick it becomes like a trick of the light trick of the eye rather so when you're looking at somebody that has this kind of really good concealing you don't notice that there's any concealing on there even though the product is incredibly high coverage before I actually finish this because I do have quite a lot of little tiny things more red marks and things just on my cheeks that I want to get round to I might actually do my blush next and for this depending on what your skin type is you can use a powder blush if you've got one that's not too shimmery because that's the biggest giveaway with no makeup makeup if you're using something that's glittery then it's not no makeup makeup anymore because no one's skin is naturally glittery yes a sheen that's fine a soft subtle sheen but as soon as you've got glitter on there it's a whole different makeup look so if you have a more of a matte blusher or something that doesn't register in daylight as glitter or particularly um, strong shimmer then it's fine. If not, use something like a lipstick, which I really like using, or you can use a cream blush or a liquid blush. Really, the liquid blushes and the cream blushes and the lipsticks are the best because what you're getting is color that's almost coming from within the skin. You're pushing it into the skin. So this is either going on top of your skincare or on top of your skin tint. And you just build slowly. If you can see, it's almost intrinsically part of the skin. And that's why it will never register as makeup. Use fingers or a brush, whichever one you're most comfortable with. And you must never leave an edge because an edge is what gives the game away. So on this side, I've obviously done a bit of concealing now. So I might have to go back in and just pinpoint again. But I will be doing a bit of pinpoint anyway on top of this because that just so happens that where my blush goes is where I have um, little pigmentation-y marks and things. But that's okay. And I think the other thing is, from a no makeup makeup, you want to have some marks. You just want to choose and cherry pick which ones to remove and which ones to leave there. Very like retouching. When people retouch photography, if they do it naturally, they kind of take out those top retouches. They almost take out a little bit, but they leave a lot in. And actually, that's kind of the way you want it to be. Because if you put that much makeup on that you don't see anything, you don't see any change or any variation in tones you don't see any little marks at all then that I don't think looks that nice you want to see those little little bits and pieces you just want to be quite selective about them so I'm just going back in with a little bit more concealer I'm actually using a warmer color because I've got a palette here of different shades if you don't have that then just mix it with the blush that you've used and that will help you to match up exactly. I'm also going to go back in with a little bit of more blush just at the front. Now that I've got the kind of first layer pushed into the skin, which is completely in synergy with my skin, I'm now just using a little bit of blush. So before I just finish off my pinpoint concealing here, do a little bit under my eyes, 
and all my pinpoint concealing on my chin. This is the best time probably to do a little bit of highlighting. You can do it at the beginning if you want, but it's really just about the product you use. So you probably, if you're more oily skinned, you can just get natural highlight just from shine or just use a little bit of your moisturizer because honestly, that's sometimes what I use when I'm doing really, really no, no, no makeup makeup looks for editorials. Just use a cream, like a face cream here and there. You just want a touch of shine. If you want to use a highlighter, just use one that doesn't have any glitter in. So you want something that has got sheen, but no glitter and no high shimmer and use a small amount. So if you can see, it just catches the top of the cheekbones. And again, just pushing it into the skin. Powder will always show, unfortunately, for a no makeup makeup look, powder highlighter. But liquids and creams, if you can find ones that have such a low level of pearling that they just give you a sheen, then it looks really, really nice to use it here and there. It's really just anywhere that when you look at your face you have a natural highlight anyway. Like when you've moisturised your face really well and you notice that you know your contours are popping, you notice certain areas of your face where you have this really lovely shine, then you want to kind of replicate that. So that is more than enough. Before I finish my pinpoint concealing, I'm actually going to go back in with a little bit of just um, foundation on its own and I'm going to be really selective about where I use this so it's just a small amount here and there and these are areas that you wouldn't really pinpoint because they're sort of larger areas but they're kind of like a patchwork in you know, like my patchwork style you're just going to go in and like here I'm definitely going to pinpoint those circles, but here there's just like a red area. And I'm using such a small amount of product, I can't tell you how little is on this brush. So that when you look at your skin, nothing is building up, if that makes sense. It's not like things are sitting on top of each other, on top of each other, on top of each other, so that you have this visual kind of you know, this sense of makeup sitting on the skin. It's not that at all. It really is about just selecting areas that you want to knock back. So now I'm gonna do, finish all the pinpoint concealing. I'm gonna start on my chin where I've just got on sort of a red thing, one almost deep freckle, like a mini mole. And then I've got a mixture of um, bits of sun damage, really, along here. Just mixing my colour there. I've got it a bit dark to start off with. Because I'm using a palette. I'm using a couple of shades. And I'm going to use a brush. You can use your foundation brush as well. You almost need to, with these sort of very heavy coverage concealers, you almost want to push them into the skin rather than blend them off. If you see that, sort of pushes them in and then you end up with, voila, no marks and no sign of makeup. So I'm just going to finish the rest of my face doing that. Yes, this does take a little bit of time, but considering the rest of the makeup is so fast, this is the thing you're gonna spend your five minutes on. And the rest is gonna be really, really quick. And actually the more you do it, the quicker you get. And then coming up around the eye, the main thing to do is conceal that outer edge. So everyone has usually a little bit of redness there or something that drags the eye down. And just by concealing that area, it almost lifts the eye anyway. Same on the other side, it's usually like a red line basically. You can use this with the same pinpoint concealer that you've been using. Dab it in. And then what you use under your eyes will really be determined by what you normally use. Just make sure it is um, a lighter coverage, maybe for someone that really piles it on. I'm just going to use a little bit of um, my foundation under there. So 
So I'm just doing a light layer. And then if you find that oh, there's a little bit of a dark, extra dark area in here, go back in with your pinpoint and just lift that area. So depending on your skin type, you may need some powder now, particularly if you've done quite a lot of concealing because you want to set it. So using a small brush, you really just want to make sure that it's not uniformly matte and the level of matte needs to be not the kind of matte where you can see powder sitting on the skin. You want to just mattify. I like to use a loose powder for this because I feel like a loose powder will never build up and attach itself to any oils in your skin in the way that a pressed powder would, particularly when you're patting it on. Even if you're using a brush, it's just, you tend to just use less really. So I'm just gonna go around there. And we're just gonna get rid of any shine that doesn't feel flattering. So it might just be a little bit on the center of the forehead. Again, depends on your skin type. And then if you have done major concealing, you might just wanna go back in and touch those areas as well. So overall, when your face is moving, it's feeling like it is patchworky in that you have little flashes of highlight from the highlighter you've used, little flashes of natural skin. You know, skin is naturally not flat, flat, flat matte, but also you've got the areas that are maybe a little bit more matte where you've had your concealing, but overall it looks like skin. On to eyes. This is the brush that I used with my under eye. I'm going to go on and depending, you know, you might not need any of this on your eyelid, but the tiniest amount of concealer, just anywhere where it's, you've got a sort of patchy, maybe skin tone or a little bit of pigmentation, but it needs to be applied in such a light way that you're not going to get creasing from it. So I'm actually gonna avoid putting it on the mobile bit of my lid because if I do that, it might crease. So I'm just using it close really to, a bit more close to my brows. But if you do need to use it all over, I mean, just use what's left on the brush and use your fingers to kind of almost blend it completely out so that there's nothing left almost. It leaves the thinnest veil of product possible. Now to actually sculpt my eyes, I'm gonna use this shade. Just wanted to show you, this is the kind of shade you want. So if you look at this, it's matte, but it's not a flat matte, so it, ha it is quite creamy, but it is a powder. And it's also very close to the shades that you can see in the natural shadow of my eyes. So of course, depending on your skin tone, you want to mirror that. You want to mirror the natural shadow that exists in your eyes. If you don't want to do sculpting or you don't want to do this kind of makeup because you know, you don't need to, maybe you've got really kind of great eye sockets, very well defined, just skip this bit and you can just leave your lids or even just put a tiny bit of highlighter on them so that they naturally catch a little bit of a sheen. You don't have to do this bit. This is just for me, I personally will just look so much better when I've got a bit of a socket line, but not so it looks like makeup. That is basically it for me. I'm using exactly the same tone underneath and I'm gonna do quite a soft wash, quite not a line. I'd say I'm creating a natural shadow. So this is thicker than a line and thinner in terms of the amount of product. That will help to sculpt my lower lash line if you can see the difference in the eyes. Um, and this is a really nice way to do a no makeup eye. Just like that. So now I'm just going back in. This is a actually a powder blush. I'm just using that to kind of add, again, it doesn't have that glittery effect, just to set almost my blush. So next for eyes, I'm going to, you can either use a little angled brush and a little bit of your mascara, or just go in with a pencil and you're kind of use, just taking it in between your eyelashes. You're not creating a line. It's just 
in between and it's not really don't you don't even need to be that careful with it you don't need to use a lot it's just giving you a sort of secret bit of eyeliner it's not really eyeliner it's just depth and then if you blob it don't worry just take a brush it's actually quite good if you do and just blend it again not to look like an eyeliner it's just to create a shadow so the next thing we're going to do is curl eyelashes and then while they are still freshly curled so I'm going to start on this eye I'm going to take a waterproof mascara or you can use a regular mascara and then just take a touch onto an angle brush and then we're going to kind of tight line again we're not really you can do this and not even do the pencil if you want I just like to do both so it starts to look really natural and just go from about the center outwards if you can see the difference in the eyes there it's almost like a sneaky very sneaky natural eyeliner and then while it's freshly curled just add a touch of mascara but we don't want it to look like mascara so if you've got either an old mascara wand that you can just clean or you have a spoolie like this just brush through them it sort of takes away all of the product that's sitting in the lashes and it depends how pedantic you want to be about no makeup makeup if you want to if you don't mind looking like you've got just mascara on and nothing else then build up to your regular levels underneath I'm just going to do a tiny amount and again I'm going to brush through so on to brows and depending on what your brows are like it's almost like you have to pick your battle so for me I if you're doing a proper no makeup makeup you don't want everything to be fully done so my brows aren't bad at all so I'm just going to put a slightly tinted gel in them if brows are your bet noir they're your thing that you really struggle with then and maybe you're you know you don't need to use as much on your skin or your lips you can just use a little bit of lip balm then if you are doing your brows just use really fine strokes with a pencil because again a no makeup makeup look is about looking completely natural and just fill in really where you need to so I'm just going to do a little bit of brow gel and then I'm going to go on to my lips. I'm going to use a little bit of pencil, uh, sorry, a little bit of balm first and then I'm going to use the same colour that I used on my cheeks and I'm just going to buff this on. This is actually a matte colour but I feel like if I just use it on top of balm I'm going to get a really natural effect. I'm also going to use this to create a little bit more shape. So I'm going to smile ever so slightly. And I'm just creating a natural shadow, if you can see, under my lower lip. You can also use a brow pencil for this if it's really ashy and a good colour or a pencil that looks more of a shadow colour but you can get away with using a little bit of lip stick if it's a matte formula and using a small amount so I'm going to go back in now just with the lipstick and use my fingers then as a final touch I'm just going back in with the highlighter and doing one dot just at the inner corner of my eyes but really subtly and then just a quick check everywhere if you need a touch more powder and that is it that is my genuine no makeup makeup and I feel like this is it in the Victorian sense in that I could go outside now and be scrutinized in daylight and people would wonder is she or isn't she because I have hardly any makeup on really if you put all of the makeup that I have on my face 
onto the back of my hand it wouldn't be a lot it's just those layers building up and I think if you look at the before now because sometimes you don't really notice it happening but if you look at the before and after now or how I look now rather against the before you can really see how the technique really plays into this it's using tiny amounts but it's thoughtful makeup it's strategic and it really does make a huge difference i'll link below to my other tutorials of my pinpoint concealing and my patchwork skin techniques because if this is a look that you really want to nail then i suggest you watch the other videos too so that is my updated no makeup makeup please let me know in the comments if you have any particular favorite products for creating this type of a look and I'll see you soon.